What up, nerds? Welcome back. My name is Nate in the Wild. As always, it is so good to see you here again. So listen, last week I was in Grand Teton National Park and we stayed up till two in the morning. We went out to String Lake and we shot this beautiful astro time lapse. I was super happy with it. Conditions were amazing. We had a little bit of a moonrise, so you can see the light come down the mountains. It illuminates the foreground. It's just really cool. I was super happy with it. When I got home and started editing it, I noticed that a couple seconds in, somebody had turned on their headlamp for one frame. Not a huge deal, but it does make the time lapse look a little bit goofy. Here, check it out as it is. Did you see it? It's super fast. It's almost impossible if you're not actually looking for it. It's right here in the very beginning. Check it out, if we scrub through this super slowly. Right there, look at that. Yeah. You can see just a single frame punches that up way too much. It's not crazy, right? Like you could share this on social media, it would be fine, nobody would think twice, we've all had shots ruined by a headlamp. It's just a single frame out of 300. It's gone in the blink of an eye, but I'm not here looking for pretty good. I'm looking for best. And so uh, I fixed this. It took me about 15 seconds and I'm going to show you how I did fail to fix it at first. I want to show you uh, what my attempt was there also, because it might be the first thing that you think of also. And uh, I'll just save you a little time on that. So the first thing I wanted to do was just open this in Photoshop and replace the reflection with the correct sky. Unfortunately, the way that LR time-lapse renders sequences and catalogs all of the metadata, you can't actually edit an image in Photoshop and then send it back to the Lightroom sequence. It's just unfortunately not that simple. If you wanna see my LR time-lapse editing process, I do have two different videos on here about my time-lapse process. So I'm gonna skip over all the setup and the editing portion and go just right into fixing this frame. So the first thing I have to do is scroll through my sequence. Now here in Lightroom, it's pretty obvious which one is which. You can see the giant red blob. Uh, if we hit D to go to the develop module, you will see uh, it looks pretty, pretty nasty. It's not the end of the world, easy to fix. Let's get into it. So first thing I'm gonna do is come down into the HSL color panel and I'm gonna select red. It's clearly a red light, that's what I want. And so I'm going to desaturate it all the way. I'm gonna bring the luminance down because it's it's illuminated, right? Like even once the color's gone, it is brighter than the rest of it. So I'm gonna wanna darken that up also. So I just bring the, the luminance down until it more or less matches what I want the foreground to look like, the rest of the reflection there. And I think that's pretty good. I mean, that's just all the way down, but it matches the rest of the reflection. Unfortunately, there's still some color left there. I'm guessing it's the orange channel. And so if I bring that down, yeah, see, look, getting rid of that pretty much gets rid of it. Unfortunately, you'll notice that moonrise that's coming up had brought some orange into the mountains. Now, I don't want to affect the subject, like the Milky Way and those mountains are the, the meat of this dish, right? And I don't want to desaturate those. And desaturating the orange out of that would unfortunately do that. Um, so I can brush over that um, to like target that specifically. Unfortunately, the HSL color panel is not linked with those brushes. So if I brush onto it and I desaturate with the, uh, the HSL color panel, I am left with desaturating the mountains again. So all I can really do with this brush is to slightly desaturate what I brushed in. Uh, you can sort of play with those colors there to see if you can cancel them. That looks pretty good. This is what I initially did. I exported the sequence like this and it is improved. That Here, this is what that one looks like. It's better, right? It's less in your face because it's not like a giant flash of red, but if you scroll through, you can see that it's still, blech, not, not my favorite sequence I've ever seen. So how do we fix this? There's a couple different ways. You can open it in Photoshop and fix that and then drag that image into the folder where it needs to be. So I have the export folder, the entire sequence exported, it was lrt11.tiff. So I could edit this in Photoshop, rename the file and replace it in here, and then just re-render the sequence out of LR time-lapse again, 
But what I want to do is make a finished product here. If I'm going to do this, I don't need this full 8K ProRes RAW image, right? This is just basically for social media. It's just a time lapse I shot for fun. If this was for a client, that might be the route I would take. But since this is just for me, what I'm going to do is just drop the full ProRes sequence. And remember, this is an 8K ProRes sequence, which is a little more than I need, of course. But I'm going to plop that whole thing into Adobe Premiere. So I'm gonna zoom out roughly to where it fits the screen. And I am going to, the first thing I like to do for these is add just a hint of motion. So I'm gonna line this up to about where I want it. So 46 fits the frame. I'm gonna start it at like 54. I'm going to give it the keyframe and I'm gonna to go to the last frame in the sequence and I'm going to give it 46. So this is just a simple little trick you can do to your time lapses, make them a little bit sexier. It's just that really slow pan out just looks fancy, right? It just looks a little nicer. So that gives it a little motion, it feels good. Now, all I need to do is find this one little frame, look at that thing, <laughs> looks bad. I don't like it, so I'm gonna get rid of it. So the easiest way to do that to zoom in on the sequence a little bit so that you can see it. Now you find the one frame you want to get rid of and I'm just going to copy the frame from right before it. So I just hit C to open the cut tool in Premiere and then I just cut this one single frame out, option click to drag it up and duplicate and then move it over the red. So now scrolling through one frame at a time, you can't, you can't see it, right? The, the blip is gone, but I don't like it because now there's two identical frames. That is going to look a little bit jarring. You could just delete the frame. I mean, at, at 24 or 30 FPS, it's moving fast enough, most people won't notice that, but we're gonna rely a little bit on viewers being distracted. They're gonna be looking at the sky. They're gonna be looking at the mountains, right? They're probably not really looking at the foreground. The only reason this is noticeable is because it's a giant bright flash of red. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take that new frame and I'm going to mask out the sky so that all we're replacing is the reflection. So you just come down here, you make a little opacity mask. So the way this mask works is that only what's inside the box is visible. So I'm masking out the frame that I used to replace it. So I don't want the sky to be visible. I just want that replacement frame on the reflection. And so I am going to make it the width of my entire frame. Make sure it's a nice level horizon because that will drive me crazy. And then I'm just gonna drag it down onto the reflection. So toggling that row on and off, you can see the sky now is the same. Our sky sequence, the Milky Way, will continue to move smoothly from left to right across the frame. It's just the reflection will have this tiny little blip. And if we thumb through it slowly, you can see it's barely even noticeable, but everything else is identical. And so when we hit play at full speed, it's cute that I thought my computer would be able to play this 8K time-lapse with multiple layers, just full resolution. Okay, so I've now exported it with the motion, the replaced frame, and this is what the final sequence looks like. Do you wanna see it again? To me, it looks absolutely seamless. I dare you to find the frame that we replaced. Even scrubbing through slowly, I genuinely don't think I could tell you where it was. So that's about all you need to do. A single frame swap in Premiere, mask out just the part that you wanna replace with the one 24th of a second right before it, and it's nearly invisible. It's the perfect way to swap it out. It'll take you like 30 seconds once you get good at it. Um, do be careful not to do too much of that. If you have like three or four frames in a row, it's gonna start to look pretty noticeable. There is such a thing, unfortunately, as just sometimes time lapses are ruined. If somebody pulls up with their headlights and leaves it on for five minutes, 
unfortunately your time lapse is shot. But for those brief moments where somebody just has a, a lapse in judgment, turns their time, their headlamp on for five seconds, this is a great way to solve that problem. You don't have to start over, your time lapse is not ruined, everything is salvageable in that case. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have a technique that I have overlooked. I would love to learn new ways to salvage time lapses because I love to ruin them. So let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, I'll see you around.